it's snowing today, but by the time this video drops, it'll probably be like July. So y'all are thinking I'm crazy. <laughs> I've got my awesome gray box. Unfortunately, no guests today, but I do have some kind of new glasses. That's a good thing, right? I haven't worn these in a while. Let's dive on in. We've got a small gray box today. Oh, I'm hoping for jewelry. Okay, so I'm gonna have to think of a holiday and whatever's in this box is gonna be my present for that holiday. Ready? Oh, shoot, the card. I'm getting ahead of myself. Ew, guys. Disgusting. You know, there's a lot of reasons I went into the gem business. One of them is because I could never work in the healthcare business. Anyone who's, oh, my hair's a mess. Anyone who's watching this and works in like the health services, healthcare business, I have so much respect for because I go to work and I look at gemstones and I'm guessing there's not dried blood in here, but y'all go to work and you have to deal with blood and other things that are probably not gonna be talked about on this channel. But anyways, you know, my, my, my patients don't talk back to me. They're just a bunch of rock hounds, rocks, you know? Like, life's pretty good on YouTube. So yeah, that is one of the reasons I, I could never have been a doctor because I, you know, blood, all that, just, no, I can't do it. If there's dried blood in here, I may or may not walk off set. Should we see it? What do you think? Three, two, one. Ha ha ha, psych. This is definitely not dried blood, but I'm guessing, I'm guessing we're gonna be talking about hematite today. Hema, blood, there's a whole lot of things that we can talk about with the name. Fortunately, this really doesn't look like dried blood. It looks, what the heck is that? Uh, what is that? Oh, Elizabeth left some sticky stuff on there. Oh well. So we have hematite. This is super, super heavy. And we can talk all about the history of how this was named, what makes hematite so cool. Basically, put your seatbelts on. We're gonna go for a gemstone ride today. So first thing I noticed about hematite was that it's super, super heavy. It really doesn't look like dried blood. It looks kind of metallic. And the last time I fell off my bike and cut myself, my blood did not look like that. This is getting real dark today on this video. So hematite is about a five and a half on the Mohs scale and its chemical composition is Fe2O3. So for all you gem nerds out there, there's our basic hematite facts. The coolest thing though about hematite is that it's actually one of the most abundant minerals on the planet and it's found mostly in Earth's shallow crust which makes me think of pizza. Hematite is known for its like reddish black color and we haven't really talked about this before. There's this test, it's like basically a streak test. And if my, if the team would not kill me, what I could do is basically run this mineral across a table and the streak for hematite would be red. Usually when you're doing a streak test, I think it's gonna be on like ceramic. So we can talk about that in the future. I unfortunately don't have the materials today and I don't wanna hurt Elizabeth's precious specimen because the streak test is destructive, meaning that it can hurt the mineral. But that's something that gemologists use. They literally will try to get a streak and whatever streak that is, whatever color that is, can help us determine what we're looking at. So apparently there's another box. Hey, hey, hey. All right, no card in here. I was hoping they wouldn't say like, is it, would that be wet blood? If this is dry blood, you're not gonna put like wet blood in here, are you? Yeah, that's kind of gross. Hey, oh, well, that's cool. Guys, what is this? Well, this is pretty. Wow, it's really heavy. Look at that crystal structure right there. Isn't that cool? Something about hematite, it's a really important ore for iron, so you can actually get iron out of hematite, which I think is super cool. That's more of a geologist. Geologists, I think, would work more with ores. I like hematite because it's shiny and it's a gem. All right, guys, so this piece is absolutely huge and there's a lot going on. What I love the most is we've got some quartz and we have the hematite and it's a pretty hefty piece but it's super cool because you can see like on the back right there all the different types of quartz and the different crystals so there's definitely a lot to learn about the hematite from this piece all right, so right here you can see the hematite's black and lucky for you, we have a um, ceramic plate and we're able to test that out today. All right, so we've got black right here and I have a like ceramic plate. It's not like the ceramic that's like a cover. This is just like a basic 
ceramic. We are gonna do a streak test, but what I need you all to remember about a streak test is that it's destructive. So if you have a piece of hematite jewelry that you love, or your friend has a piece of hematite jewelry or their mineral specimen, don't do the streak test unless you're okay with hurting the piece. Thankfully, Elizabeth has been so generous and is letting us use this particular specimen to conduct the test. Are you ready? So basically what I'm gonna do, we've got our ceramic right here. Okay, I'll go like this. <laughs> All right, so there's an end for Natalie and you can see like, that looks black right there, but that streak test looks like dry blood. And it's kind of gross. We'll say I love gems. Pretty cool, huh? So it look like look at right there. It's like um I mean, doesn't that look like blood? That's so gross, but it literally looks like, you know, I don't, if you guys have ever gotten a mosquito bite and you've like slapped the mosquito and like you've had blood on your skin, that's kind of what it looks like. But I just, I think that's so cool that it's black and you can see, I don't know if you guys can see it, but I'm like taking some of the, the material off right there on the tip. That's where I'm using to do the streak. So this is one of the tests gemologists use to figure out what mineral that they have. I always recommend using more than one test, but I, I think this is by far one of the more fun ones to use. So, hey, I hope you learned something new in the future. Hopefully I can get some more of these ceramic tiles and we can conduct streak tests in the future on the channel with other minerals. Maybe this could be like a new series, who knows? Hey, so the awesome thing about gemology is that not only do we get to study chemistry and physics and we get to learn about art and design but there's also you know a pretty big historical component of the business and hematite is in that club as well. So it was around 300 to 325 BC that a Greek man by the name of Theophrastus named the stone and the Greek word which I can't say to save my life. I don't speak Greek, unfortunately. I only speak Italian and Portuguese. Anyways, that stone, the translation was basically like stone of blood. And I have a hunch that that's because when you streak this stone, it looks like dried blood, which makes me think that my production team is not just gross and into dried blood, but they're actually history buffs. Pretty cool, huh? All right, guys, so another really cool fact about hematite is that some people actually think it was the first mineral to use the suffix I-T-E. And back in 79, and that's like the year 79, not like 1979, Pliny the Elder named it hematite, H, I believe it was spelled H-A-E-M-E-I-T-E, -E -E, and it basically means like blood-like because when they had this in powder form, it looked like the very vivid color of blood and I must have a bunch of vampires on the set today because we've talked a lot about blood. Definitely. Although the only one that looks like a vampire here is probably me. <laughs> All right, so we've talked about the history of hematite, but there's actually some pretty cool stuff going on in like present day. There's this group, it's called NASA. You may have heard of them. They um, work a lot with like spaceships, planets, outer space, maybe some aliens. But anyways, NASA found this really cool fact and that's that Earth and Mars have something in common. They both have hematite. So Earth has hematite in the crust and Mars has hematite on the surface. And that red color we see on Mars' surface, we can think hematite. Mars' appearance of like looking red in the night sky, hematite. And Mars has this nickname, red planet. What do you think that's from? Hematite. Pretty cool, huh? For all you jewelry lovers, hematite is actually set in jewelry and it's pretty cool looking. Sometimes you'll see hematite, it has that botryoidal crystal structure with basically looks like a bunch of grapes. But anyways, when you are shopping for hematite, there's something you need to be careful of. Sometimes it's advertised as magnetized and that is not something you wanna be buying that could be artificially created because hematite on its own will not attract a magnet, but hematite, if it has enough magnetite in it, will attract a magnet. So just something to be careful, um, never cite ID, always ask questions, and whatever jewelry you do buy, enjoy it. So I want you to take a closer look at hematite here, and also quartz. That's so cool that you can see two different minerals together, and that hematite can be a quartz inclusion. Um, so take a look at those crystals and how beautiful this specimen is, and isn't it cool how much we can learn from just a basic old specimen.
right, guys, that concludes today's episode. I hope you learned a lot. My favorite fact was how hematite is um, abundant on Mars and on Earth and how NASA figured that out. And I'm hoping that someone from NASA is watching this video and they'll let us come down there and unbox something or do a gem venture. But for the record, I'm not getting in a spaceship and I'm not going to Mars. That's a little outside of my job duties. <laughs> Anyways, like, subscribe, and share these videos with your friends. We wanna open up the world of gemology to everyone, whether they're jewelry lovers or mineral lovers. And we're so excited to have this awesome community on YouTube. So so thank you for watching.